All right, we'll get started here in a minute or so. <clears throat> Just got done cutting grass, so how's everybody doing this evening? Let's go ahead and transition here. Hopefully I won't have any too many, too many issues with tonight's stream. The last one was choppy. Anyway, what is happening for tonight? How's my sound? Can you guys hear me okay? We have Haddock Dev, Chuck Harrington, Mark, hello, William Rumley, Netro, Amarosi. Thank you, Chuck. I um, It is from the YouTube Audio Library. And uh, let's see, I think the artist, yeah, the 126ers. I have no idea what that means. But it sounds pleasant, so why not? If you guys don't like the music, I'll be happy to shut it off. It's no big deal. Elvis, Fat Elvis, is in the house. Hey, Goomba, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, what's the word for tonight? What's the word for tonight? How you doing? Anyway, we'll get started here. In a minute, by request, I'm going to take a look at um, Revenge OS, OB Revenge, Revenge of the Sith, Revenge of the Jedi. I don't know what, why it's called that. Uh, is my mic okay? I guess this. I, I guess the music sounds good. How's my mic? Thunderbird. I used to have a Thunderbird when I lived in Florida, Fat Elvis. Uh, V8 engine. Um, they don't make it anymore. Um, I got a picture of it somewhere, here somewhere, but it was a nice looking car. Back then where gas was like 98 cents a gallon. <laughs> that was my revenge. Revenge of Taco Bell. Well, is that a new taco, William? The mic is fine. Okay, thank you, Netra. Anybody mess with, um... Thanks, Mark. Anybody mess with, uh... OB Revenge? Or Revenge... <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Rose is in the house. Rose from Canada. Hello, Rose. How are you? Welcome, one and all, to tonight's live stream. I thought about hooking up my webcam, but just got done cutting grass and yeah, just need to shower and all that. But anyway, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, OB Revenge of the Nerds. This is an unusual, and I'll be running it inside a virtual machine with Windows 10 as the host. Uh, this is an unusual uh, Linux-based operating system. It is user-friendly. It's not beginner-friendly, in my opinion, at least not the installer. The installer can be overwhelming. Revenge of Shinobi. Very well, Obi-Wan Shinobi. <laughs> um, I guess we can get started. Um... Whoever comes in late, too bad. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I actually cut the gra I, grass. I finished cutting the grass. I finished right before right before it got uh, like too dark to cut, which was like over half an hour ago. So I was debating when I cut the grass. Uh, you know, should I shower, shave, change my clothes? And I don't want to start this too late. Um, hi, Ben. How are you, Ben? So I figure, you know, I'll just clean up later. You know, I have my, um, my organic cola.
I'm back. Phone. Just checking my phone. Anyway, sorry about that. I am here. Um, anyway, um, where was I? So, yeah, anybody else? Um, then ran out of distros to use. <laughs> uh, really? All five to six hundred, including all the forks? Then I don't think so. Maybe you have. I don't know. Have you? That's funny. Oh my. Anyway, let me check up my mic input here. I think I'm okay. All right, looks good. I took some screenshots uh, of the installing, uh, installer installing process of Revenge OS. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen desktop environments to choose from. Yes, I'm sure a newbie would be quite at home choosing one of these desktop environments by going I chose Mater Mate. Um, yeah, for a newbie this would be a little bit too much. Select the media applications you would like to install. I mean, it is, it is friendly for someone who knows a little bit about Linux. The one thing I didn't like about this, it didn't have a progress bar. It just had a, a slider going back and forth during the installation process. It didn't take that long. But I would prefer a steady, you know, sliding bar. Most Ubuntu base give you a little progress bar, so that's the one thing I wish it had. Uh, but it didn't have that. Um, let's see here. Try Solus. Okay. Solus confused, okay. Background music too loud, okay, no problem. I'll turn it down. How's that? Is that better? If it's annoying, I'll just shut it off, so. Rx Pro. I don't know what that is. Okay, are we good now for the music and the mic mic sound? Better. Okay, thank you, Rose. Okay, thanks. All right. So again, this is by request. I was asked to take a look at um, Revenge OS. Um. I went to the website, and I'll just show you. Um, clean looking website, uh, powered by, uh, I think it's Weebly, which is fine. Uh, nice photo. It says it'll be revenge, but I think I think it's being called just for revenge now, I think. It says get it now, so I clicked get it now. And um, I did not get it now. It says let's chat. Has hours, corporate office, California, Google Maps, and there was nothing here. Not a good sign. But to be fair, I searched the web and I was able to download uh, OB Revenge or Revenge, whatever it's called, um, and I chose the Mate, the Mate or Mate desktop. Something there's something there's something up here with the website. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. So let's go right to the, um, um, yeah. Let's go right to this, and I'll show you what we have. Make sure we're all good here. My voice has been disguised. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hope I'm not going to have issues again. Are we 
we good? Darth Vader. <laughs> well, what happened? Are you having issues? No voice, really. Let's go back here. Let's get out of that. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Verizon, can you hear me now? Hello, Torch. Can you hear me now? Now? Oh, my voice is still the same. I see. I thought my voice. My, I, th I thought you couldn't hear my voice. Deepin OS. No mark. I uh, I have never had good luck. I have never had good luck with Deepin OS. Um, isn't that Chinese based? Um, yeah. So no, I will not be messing with Deepin. Looks pretty. Voice seems to break up. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. It seems okay on my end here. I'm going to continue. Hopefully this will clear up. Oh, it changed when I was checking my phone. Oh, let me see here. All right, let me go into my settings here and see what's up. Do, 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 do. Okay, hopefully that'll be a little better. Go into the settings here. A basso profundo. <laughs> Politics is not for the faint of fart. Fart. <laughs> uh, I guess I could restart the stream if it's not working right. Yuba Sin. Hello, Yuba. Uba. It's working now? Okay, cool. Cool. All right, cool. All righty. Sorry about that. Went back into the settings. I figure it's in the settings. Uh, Joe Johnson is in the house. I use Linux, Joe. I do. You know I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I just like to dual boot. You know, what can I say? I like my malware. It keeps me on my toes. You see what I'm saying? Um, 
Anyway, okay, so let's take a look at the... Look, looks like my voice is back to normal instead of whatever I was sounding like Darth Vader. <gasps> Feel the power of the Linux side. Anyway, let's move along. And uh, I don't use... Well, I mean, I'm running, I'm running Windows, you know, trying to compare Mate or OB Revenge, Revenge OS to Windows 10. Okay, let's get moving here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and um, pop out the chat. Hope I don't lose you. Are we still good? MX sixteen is good. I have I have looked at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I chose the Mate version for Revenge OS. I think that's what it's called. There were many many desktop environments to choose from. Uh, it can be overwhelming uh, for a newbie. Um, it is a little bit more beginner friendly in terms of the um, um, the installer. Um, didn't take that long to install. Uh, I chose Mater Mate just to make it lightweight and easy. Uh, this is definitely built for speed. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because I chose Mate. Thanks, Mark. It sounds good. Okay, the voice is good. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure this. I'm not sure if this runs fast because I chose um, Mate, or because it's Arch based, or a combination of the two. Um, but playing around with this briefly, this thing zips even in a virtual machine. It's not a full install per se in a you know uh, per per se in a in a uh, spare machine. But I did install it in a VM and did not have any issues uh, installing Revenge um, OS. Um, I wish the web the the uh, gentleman's website would have been more up to date. Uh, I had to search for the ISO to download. Uh, didn't see any torrents available, unless I'm missing them. But I think I had to go to um, uh, Source SourceForge, I do believe, uh, to get the ISO, and it seems okay. Uh, Fat Elvis, I have heard of Arch Labs. Um, I don't use it myself. Uh, what I understand, that's also a pretty zippy fast one. Um, so let's get through this. I'll go, I'll go through this as fast as I can. I, I purposely did not install a lot of apps uh, just to give you my impressions uh, running this. Um, so let's move along here. Clean desktop environment, the usual Mate or Mate desktop. Uh, the, the tool panel bars top and bottom ignore the Windows 10 here you know because I'm running this inside a virtual machine applications places system you've probably seen this before if, if you've been if you remember the old Ubuntu GNOME 2 or, or the new Mate uh, fairly new Mate desktop uh, this is meant to be lightweight during the install process you get to choose what pieces of software you want to install I purposely kept this light just to see if the installer would crash uh, it did not System tools, system monitor, 419 megs. Um, not bad. This is funny. CPU usage, 3%, 2%, 3%. Okay, I'll take it. Of course, places, the home folder. Kaha, Kaja, whatever it's called. The default theme for green, it's okay. Of course, that can be changed. Uh, system, preferences, hardware, internet, look and feel, personal. Uh, what are the startup applications? A whole crap load. Let's see. Normally, if I did this as a full install, I probably, probably what? Um, looks like Pulse Audio is installed. The screensaver, maybe would not need that. 
course VBox and a full install would need that. Overall not too bad. Control Center. Pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. Um, yeah. Let's go to Preferences, Look and Feel, Appearance. Uh, let's see. Mm, not too many. That's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. Black, Black Mate. And Black Theme. Right click. This is running really, really smooth. Impressive, to say the least. Um, the choice of default wallpaper. It, it could be better, in my opinion. So we'll just pick the earth here, since we are all human, aren't we? So we have networking. Right click for sound preferences. Pretty basic stuff here. Hardware input, output, applications. Installed software. Groups. State repositories. Core extra community revenge repo. Interesting. Spooky. <laughs> okay. Why would this be called spooky? A U R. Because it's scary to use? I don't know. Is that what it is? AUR. AUR is a community maintained repository that presents potential risks and problems. Yes. I'm going to turn it on anyway because I want risk. Let's check your comments here real quick. Okay, you guys are chatting. That's that's fine. Be my guest. Uh, let's go. What do I want to go here to? Administration, light DM. Um, software update. Let's see what do we have. Wow, system's up to date. That's interesting. Usually there's something to download. Evidently not. Let's try um, add remove. Um, hmm, let's see. Of choice repositories that you are. Let's try simple screen recorder. Oh, okay. That was fast. And let's see. Apply. Total download commits, of course the password. That's running pretty zippy, as you can see the progress bar here. Um, I'm going to get out of this dark theme, I think. I'll choose that one for now. And um, transaction successfully finished. I feel like I'm at a bank when it says that. And there we go. Very zippy inside a virtual machine. I like it. Let's get back to your comments. Uh, let's see. Looks like to talk about MX, that's fine. The do 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 arch based ghost. Uh, I'm watching your distro also. Um, woman, I can multitask. Toss, toss, you uh, toss, Rose. I'm talking to myself, a hey, toss. 
Rose, you can multitask. Hmm, I need to meet more women like you. Um, HP ProBook, i5 model, the National Spy Agency. Um, <laughs> yep. When uh, me and Spatry used to do that Sunday night news and nonsense, it was the National Spatry Association administration or something, just making fun of them. Uh, I do have Asperger's, by the way, and if you read it on it, it will tell you a person what does require handheld to learn. Ah, okay. Well, you've done pretty well, Ben, with Linux. Um, yeah. So where was I? So, I mean, briefly, you know, I'm not sure if this is a, com you know, a fair comparison, uh, you know, to Windows 10. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right, here, here we go. Obviously, Linux is more customizable in general. Uh, you have many choices of desktop environments uh, that you do with Windows 10, obviously. Uh, is it for newbies? I can't really say it's for newbies. Uh, the installing process can be a little bit overwhelming uh, for a complete newbie. Uh, is it beginner friendly? Yes, I totally agree that uh, Revenge OS is beginner friendly. Um, it was friendly for me to get this thing up and running, at least with a lightweight desktop. I'm curious if I was to install, I don't know, GNOME, something a little bit more heavier, how this would run. Um, if, you know, you know, Windows 10 and um, Asphalt 8 Airborne, oh, I guess I want a car, the Porsche 918 Spider event is on. I missed it Friday. Dang. That's one of my favorite games. Asphalt 8 Airborne. Anyway, what the heck was I saying? There's so, so many topics going on tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, if you are a Windows user and have a little bit of knowledge about Linux uh, and want to install this inside a virtual machine, go for it. Uh, the installer is beginner friendly, not quite newbie friendly. Uh, but if you have some knowledge, it's not that difficult. The Vervange OS website needs a little bit more polish or a little bit more information. It's very sparse. And clicking that link where it said, get it now or download here, and then it says, let's chat. Well, there's nothing to chat about because there was nothing there to download. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. So that is not quite beginner friendly in terms of the Vervange OS website. I don't know if it's being updated or the gentleman forgot to, you know, add to it. I don't know. I'm going to put that aside for now and just go by its, um, and go by what I see with this. Comparing it to Windows 10, it, it compares nicely. I can see myself dual booting uh, in, my, in a spare machine, Windows 10 and uh, Revenge OS. Uh, in terms of a dual boot, and dual boot environment, it, it uh, compares very nicely. Um, if that makes any sense. So for Revenge OS or OB Revenge or Revenge of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, whatever this is called, yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up, give it a shot. Um, it seems okay, at least in my brief tests running Revenge OS. So whoever requested me to take a look at it, this test went perfectly fine, at least so far. It's zippy, it's stable uh, in a virtual machine at least. And I don't have a hefty, uh, you know, desktop computer. Simple quad core, six gigs of RAM, internal graphics. And uh, in case anybody out there is, is wondering, this runs pretty smooth. So I'm quite happy testing at least Revenge OS. Um, that's it for my look at Revenge OS. I'm just going back and forth here on your chat, on your comments here. So whatever you guys want to talk about is fine with me. Did I miss anything in Revenge OS? I don't think so, did I? Pretty basic stuff, so yeah. Hmm. 
<clears throat> That's what I figured. Figured, Chuck. LB Revenge, Mate Revenge, K Revenge are all now with just Revenge OS. I kind of figured that. Um, yeah. Kind of figured that. MX-16 for Rose. Okay, that's cool. I tested that. Uh, somebody asked if I looked at Solus before. I believe I did. It seemed okay. Uh, but that is a whole new type of Linux operating system with its own repository. So the, the software bank may be somewhat sparse uh, for others who are more used to a more robust you know, repository such as Debian, Ubuntu, or Arch. But from what I saw in Solus, it seems okay. They they are more focused. That OS is focused primarily, from what I saw, on stability rather than an abundance of software. Uh, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Hey, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I. I think the gentleman named it Revenge because for so many users, new, new users, I'm assuming, for trying to run Arch was difficult and impossible. So the 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 gentleman of Revenge OS, I can't think of his name. I think he's been on the Destination Linux podcast. Uh, he made it easier and got his revenge on Arch. I think that's how it was explained to me. Okay, seems reasonable. Um, and it is easy. Um, so yeah, I like I said, give, I give it a thumbs up. Sure. Solus is good stuff. Ikeno's is stuff. Very security oriented. Uh, Chuck, I think Linux by its very nature is probably more security or, or oriented. Or is this is there something special with Solus that makes it extra secure? Um, I mean, I don't know. Just read what Asperger is. I think it has to do with focusing, if I'm not mistaken, Rose, Ben. Uh, Windows 10 is malware spyware. <laughs> oh my. Once again, guys, no matter what you use, once you get on the web, forget about privacy, in my opinion. Jody James, that's that's a gentleman behind uh, Revenge. Um, If I'm not mistaken. Secure programming practices and code. No. There's a fly in here. Huh? Now you see why I need so much help. All right, Ben. Well, we're always here to help. Yes, toss. That's okay. So the focusing part is part of it. Aren't there uh, different levels of Asperger's? Uh, and I believe there's uh, medication, if, if I'm not mistaken, treatments for that. Uh, don't know too much about it. Trump is in Youngstown. He can have it. Asperger is a higher functioning form of autism. Ah, okay. Yeah, Ben, I, I I never could tell that you had a Asperger's or, you know. So, I, I think you're handling quite well. So, yeah. Look, anybody that can learn Linux, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Why don't we go into the... Um, um, Linux Today website here. Uh, let's see here. You had it since birth. Okay, but I, but Ben, I think it's treatable, if I am not mistaken, right? Depending on the level, um, if I am not mistaken. 
correct me if I'm wrong. You know, feel free to correct me or anybody if I'm wrong. But I believe it's something that is tr treatable depending on the uh, the severity of it. Um, I'm sorry I don't know that much about it, but um, Devil's Ivy is another wake-up call for IoT security. Oh, okay. Might come back to take a look at that. So I. Back to my original, one of my questions. Has anybody here tried Revenge OS? Chuck, have you tried it? Let's see here. Lucasfilm goes open source. Interesting. Ubuntu 17.10, back to known future. Ha ha. How to fix Linux problems. Use Windows 10. <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. It works well, Chuck? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Anything else here? Uh, what do we have? Let's go back to that first one. Devil's Ivy sounds serious. Ooh. Arch is not quite as bad as some make it. It just takes a little work once you get there, though. It is it is rare that you have to reinstall. Okay. All right. <sighs> Windows 10 couldn't fix itself. I think it's more Microsoft show than Windows 10. But, yeah, I hear you. Oh, uh, let's see. There's been another wake-up call concerning our old friend, the Internet of Things. Mm, let's see here. Although the amount of damage this can do remains uncertain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, best security practices to connected devices. The vulnerability called Devil's Ivy or CVE 2017-9765. Sounds like a planet and alien. Um, was made public last week by Senrio. Uh, hmm. Just reading this real quick here. Devil's Ivy, like the planted, is nearly impossible to kill. Ooh. Eh. Okay. Enough of that. Micro Spy. Yes. Micro Spy. Micro Spy OS. Since we're on the topic. Uh, let's see. Improve Windows 10 security with exploit protection. I'll get to that in a moment. Microsoft announces Windows 10 security features. Oh, they must be switching to Linux. Ha ha ha, that one's for Joe. Uh, yeah, IoT is a mess, yeah. Yeah. And let's go back. Um, I think the next one we'll do with, um, we'll talk about net neutrality. The video stopped. Uh, let's see, looks good here. Are we good? I just paused it here.
Do I use any specific anti-ransomware? Mark, I don't have anything specific. I um, I keep my system up to date. You know, both my Linux and Windows systems. That seems to work. Um, should I be using anti-ransom? I think the next Windows 10 update will have something like that built in. Um, which is good. You know, regardless of the privacy issue. Uh, video stopping only on viewer. Okay, all right, cool. Hi, hi, flying techs. Um, anyway, let's go back to the um, Windows 10 security. So yeah, as far as the uh, the uh, uh, exploit protection, um, the Fall Creators update includes a number of new security features, including controlled folder access and exploit protection. Exploit protection is part of Microsoft Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit, and it improves security by mitigating threats from untrusted or insecure apps. I think this has something to do with anti-ransom, at least part of it, if I am not mistaken. Um, when it's enabled, uh, it allows the management and configuration of the Windows system and, and application exploit mitigation settings. It's worth noting that the exploit protection feature is new. Yeah, okay, so, so to enable Windows 10 exploit protection, and looks like some settings here. Let's see, Windows Security by App. It's, it's, it will be under the App. This will be with Insider Build 16232 um, under the app and browser control. So anybody with Windows 10, I would definitely turn that on. Um, let's see, scroll down, next page, click Exploit Protection Settings, Block More and Off, Exploit Protection. Uh, let's see, two categories. One is for system settings, program settings. All of them are on by default. Okay, they should be. Customize security settings. Anyway, to the question of anti-ransomware, I don't use anything specific. With the next update, it looks like Microsoft is, least, is at least attempting to address the issue of ransomware, which is very, very, very bad. Um, yeah. This is probably the same thing here, security features. All right, so it's again, it's the application guard, whatever you want to call it, exploit guard. I th I, th I think this is all good. So yeah. Um, let me see something here. Going back to what I was looking at. Um, I'll be revenge awesomeness. Okay. Yeah, most of the reviews for this Revenge OS have been positive as far as I know. Um, as far as I've seen. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah. Windows exploits your system. <laughs> oh my, Rose. What can I say? I like to game in Windows, Rose, so I use just like you like to game. The, are you the one that likes Windows XP, Rose? I think it's you. And that's fine. Um, nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Gonna grab me a little snack here. I got some pretzel sticks. Snyder of Hanover. 
Anybody like Snyder of Hanover? Anyway. Switch to Linux. Yeah, he seems like a fine chap. Former YouTuber of the month here on the channel. By the way, less than a week left this month. Vote for, uh, you know, Toss Today's or, well, it's not me voting. It's, it's you guys. Vote for the YouTuber of the month. Does not necessarily have to be about technology. One comment equals one vote. And uh, we'll see if we can f find another person to be YouTuber of the month. So far, the previous choices have been all oh, very good. Windows is, Joe, will you stop it already? Jeez. Uh, I bet Joe, I bet Joe uses Windows 10. He's starting to come out of the closet. The Windows closet. Okay, Rose, it is you. Yeah, I actually, I might, I may, I might install Windows XP in a virtual machine, see if I can uh, play one of my old PC games. Yeah, good pretzels they are. Snyder Hanover. I picked this up for um, a couple bucks. Low fat, non-GMO, verified. I wonder if that's true. Anyway, Snyder rocks. Okay, cool. Rose, you want to play Call of Duty? Okay. Tin foil hat time. I do not do tin foil hat times. Um, podcast or vidcast. That's a switch to Linux thing. Of course, the problem with that scene now, when he does his tin foil hats, he randomly screams out his thoughts. So it's switched to screaming. But that's his style, and that's cool. Go ahead, Ben. Install Windows XP. Have fun. How? Joe is in the house. What is up? Well, Joe, you missed the um, playback, but it was my take on, by request to take a look at Revenge OS, OB Revenge, whatever it's called. I downloaded the Mate version or Mate version of it. I don't think it's newbie friendly. It's it's beginner friendly, I would say, or somewhat beginner friendly. Uh, I think there was what what did I count? Seventeen desktop environments to choose from. That might be overwhelming for a beginner. And um, anyway, but I like what I saw, and and it's um, it's zippy in a virtual machine, very zippy. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Chuck, he goes, switch to Linux, does go on fire. Um, pretzel munching is making you hungry. Go for it, Mark. Yeah, pick up, um, <laughs> go see what's in your fridge. I'll wait for you, Mark. Go ahead. <laughs> Toss doesn't get upset as much. Rose, I, I really don't. Um, He's calming. Yes, I am. Um, I am calming. I think I am. I've been told I have that certain voice, calming, friendly voice. That's one of the reasons why I'm still here. You know, I try to keep a level. I try to keep a level head of things. You know, whatever it is about technology. You know, pros and cons. Then go from there. Adobe is finally killing Flash. Here you go, Joe. This one's for you. Let's see what it says. Okay, Mark, go grab yourself a snack. Don't even think about it. We will build the wall. Anyway. Wasn't there a movie called The Wall? But it says here, Adobe has finally heard what the world has been screaming at. Flash needs to die, okay? Adobe today announced plans to see solid development and distribution of its once ubiquitous but perennially unloved browser plugin by 2020. Interesting. I uh, believe it when I don't see it. That makes sense. Oh, licorice. Mark, I love strawberry licorice from, I think it says Australian or something. Oh, man, I could eat like a whole ton of it. I love licorice. Oh man, I kind of wish I had that now. Well, but I'll survive with my pretzels. 
Anyway. Spatry didn't like you? Really, Ben? I never heard of that. Hackers delight Adobe Flash. Well, according to this, it's going to be done. Put the rest by 2020. To be replaced by, I don't know. What's it going to be? HTML5? I don't know. Derrily Licorice. You buy it in Australia. Ah, very good. I want to guess your favorite flavor is cherry. I have no idea. I just, but I like strawberry. <coughs> Firefox 55 starts up faster, uses less memory. Okay, if you say so. Are you with your mouth? You want me to eat with my mouth closed? Is that what? I'm sorry. I know what you mean. Well, let's see what we, it's kind of hard to chew on a pretzel quietly without a muffler in my mouth. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi, hi, Kron. Hi, Kron? Yeah, I want you to, sorry for the chewing. I'll chew my other pretzel when I'm done here, okay? I apologize. Well, let's see here. Um, tab hoarders rejoice. Firefox is about to get re ridiculously good at handling large number of tabs. Firefox 55 due for release at the start of August will feature a series of improvements to the browser's responsiveness. Oh, the work is something called Quantum Flow. Thought I heard that on Star Trek. A Mozilla engineer is a, a project to find engineering project to fine tune and tweak the overall. I'll believe it when I feel it. Firefox is slow in Linux. Um, opening tabs. Okay. You want me to stop breathing real? Get out of here, Darth. You're so annoying. Go back to the dark side, will you? Yeah, that was an issue when one of, um, oh, who was it? Um, I can't think of his name now. Collins. Somebody, somebody asked him to stop breathing or something. Oh, my. I guess he took it personally, Rose. Yeah, but, um. You want to see a Switch of Linux's cat ride a Roomba? I would like to see that too, Fat Elvis, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you search the web, someone has already done that. I, I bet you. Firefox seems much faster. It seems okay in Windows, but Linux, it, I don't know. Visit side service to rely on Flash, okay. Uh, memory's not an issue. You have 12 gig of DDR. Yeah, that's pretty fast, Joe. Yeah, 12 gigs, yeah. It just, it just feels faster in Windows than it does in Linux. Um, they are data mapping homes for analytic sales. Windows 10 is rubbing off on others. Uh-oh. 16 gigs of RAM, okay. Memory leaks. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, this is, I'm just catching this for the first time here. Memory usage is also massively reduced. Well, and this comes out, when did I read this? Uh, release at the start of August. So that, guys, there you go. Good news, if it actually works. I've tried different tweaks in Firefox for Linux. It's hopeless. But I still have it. Someone finally asked why Ubuntu has three terminal apps. Why would an OS need three terminal apps? I don't know. Hey Toss, can someone access Ben's computer to install it? it I believe it can be done. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't do that personally, but I believe it can be done. Um, there should be apps out there um, for Linux. Um, up the top of my head, I can't think of them, but yes, it can be done, sure. Cupzilla, I use that. 
You know, while I'm here, let me go ahead and um, shut this down. Uh, shut down Revenge OS. I don't have to look at this anymore. It works fine. So if you guys want to check it out. That was a fast shutdown. Um, MS Paint. I never use it, Chuck. Yeah, I had. I have no reason to. Um, yeah, but I believe that's one of the apps, Team Viewer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just never done it before. Um, but uh, maybe switch to Linux. I have an idea. I don't know. Next time I, I um, catch on Tom on is one of his, um, I guess I can ask him, but I don't know, but maybe, you know, maybe you maybe be best if you, you know, try and contact him. But if, um, you know, I, I don't have a problem talking to Tom, ask him about, you know, team viewer or whatever. Uh, let's see here, session manager, Kubzilla QT based web browser. Cubzilla 2.3. Okay, well that's cool. I like Cubzilla. It's it's pretty fast. Let's see what else we got here. We had talked about this in um, uh, last Friday night on Big Daddy's uh, live um, live stream which default apps to be in uh, Ubuntu 18.04. Ben just sent him a message on the Switch to Linux uh, YouTube channel. See what he says. That's what I would do. That's how I would call him. Just send him an email. Yeah. Noobs Lab is another website I like to go to. Let's see here. MPV and open source and player. Okay, very good. Arancello. Useful indicators and other stuff here. I did it. Download and install WP Office. I'll be taking a look at that in spite of the ads. <laughs> Gnome Pi, here we go with the food again. A very handy launcher for your Ubuntu Linux Mint desktop. Very good. Let's see what else we have here. WeChat. Very handy launcher for Ubuntu Linux. Very good. I do not use GNOME Pi. Let's try another website. Probably going to wrap this up soon. Um, One thing I like about these live streams, we can still go slightly off topic or whatever. It's, it's still it's still fun to do. So I, you know, I just want to let you guys know if we go off topic, I'm perfectly fine with that. Ultimately, people come first, and then the technology. So, and I think I'm probably the only channel doing that, or you know, one of the few. Um. Anyway. Um, yeah, Big Daddy Life Feed gives gives you a headache. <laughs> One person technical problem. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he's 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 cool. <laughs> you can at least drop by and say hello. <laughs> uh, why? Yeah, it's it's the um, I don't think the the technical problems are because of Big Daddy Rose. It's it's just the um, 
uh, it's the software of the um, uh, what's he use a, 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 a peer dot in and you know he has people from all over so part of that is of course the internet and bandwidth and all that but does he always have one person with technical issues I don't know about always <laughs> uh, that's one reason why I love toss and his feed now oh thank you Ben thank you it's very kind of you yeah I I don't do these for drama uh, so yeah all right let's take a look at ours get off your arse I guess I can say that. Let's see what's here. What is the car industry's problem with over-the-air software updates? Maybe it's hacking? I don't know. US slipping towards measles epidemic again? Are you kidding me? Good God, okay. All right. Toyota in production engineering for a solid state battery. Interesting. Net neutrality face fuck. There was there was a um net neutrality face off. There was a um uh, the last Mintcast podcast that was a very good topic or part of it with the two co hosts they talked about net neutrality it was very interesting. Um so we may do that next time. Um, I want to take a look at this here. Uh, uh, toity toid on Third Street. Toity toid. Toity toity toid. Why don't you do a guest host? Uh, I've been a guest. Uh, a guest host. Never really thought about it, Chuck. I guess I can ask, uh, Big Daddy. Um, he, he does those I don't think he does those Friday nights because he does his own live feed um, I never really thought about it but I guess that would be fun to do sure let's see here Toyota and production engineering for a solid state battery hmm EV3 concept vehicle 2015 a solid electrolyte electric vehicle battery Hmm. 2022 car. Solid state batteries are made smaller and lighter than lithium ion batteries. That's interesting. Solid state battery would also reduce the fire risk. Well, that's cool. Chrysler had a hack within the last three years, which has been patched. Ah, it was a Linux hole which allowed the hacker to take control. Ugh. Think they do it on the weekend cast. Oh, the Destination Linux? Yeah, that sounds about right. It took a viral video, I bet. Ah, uh, bye. Oh, my. It feels like Friday. Oh, okay. Anyway. What else do we have here? Yep. Somebody mentioned the Windows Paint. Bye-bye. No more painting for you. Uh, vitamin supplements effective at boosting call volume to poison centers. Ew, that's not good. Clock ticking on Google as $2.7 billion fine. Okay. Trump Voting Commission wins rights to collect state voter data. Sure, why not? Who cares about privacy anyway? Um, United made false announcement about comic book luggage ban. I have no idea what's that about. I had to grab another pretzel. Anyway.
I check out Salon occasionally. I think it's one of these here, this one. I think they have a text section somewhere. How changing your diet could save animals from extinction. <laughs> now there's an unusual topic. Uh, let's see. Nothing there. Um, hackers remotely kill a Jeep. Let's just search it by that way and see what pops up. There it is, it's right there, okay. So let's see here. It's driving 70 miles per hour on the edge of downtown St. Louis when the exploit began to take hold. Uh, and not Touch, hadn't touched the dashboard. The vents in the Jeep started blasting cold air at the maximum setting, chilling the sweat next to the radio switch to the local hip hop station, blaring ski low at four volume. I spun the control to hit the power, but no avail in the windshield wipers. Not good. As I tried to cope with all this, the picture of the two hackers before these stunts appeared in the car's digital display. Really? Uh, let's see here. Digital crash is dummy, willing subject on whom they could test the car hacking research they've been doing over the past year. The result of their work was a hacking technique, what the security industry calls a zero-day exploit. Yeah, I have heard of that. That can target Jeep. Is it only Jeep Cherokees? It's probably possible with all vehicles, right? And give the attackers wireless control via the internet to any of thousands of vehicles. Yeah. Their code is an automaker's nightmare. I'm sure it is. Yeah, the hack requires physical access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To better simulate the experience of driving a vehicle while it's being hijacked by an invisible virtual force. Miller and I guess the two hackers refused to tell me ahead of time what kinds of attacks they planned. Hmm. Instead, they merely assured me they wouldn't do anything life threatening. Okay. Uh, let's see here. No matter what happens, don't panic. Okay. As the two hackers remotely toyed with the air conditioning, ra with the air conditioning, radio, windshield wipers, I mentally congratulated myself on my courage under pressure. That's when they cut the transmission. Oops. Immediately, my accelerator stopped working. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. The security cell was reaching a long overpass. Ah. Uh, let's see. Wireless carjackers, yeah. Wow, this, this is scary to be driving down the road in your car and you have no control. Wow. That's crazy. Possible because all of this is possible only because Chrysler, our practically all the car makers, is doing its best to turn the modern automobile into a smartphone. Huh. 
You connect an internet connected computer feature in hundreds of thousands of Fiat Chrysler SUVs, trucks, okay. Hmm. Uh, all of that controlled by the ECU, yeah. Keep your car in the garage, really. Sharing their research with Chrysler for nine months, okay. Enabling the company to release a patch. If, if consumers don't realize this is an issue, they should, and they should start complaining to car makers. This might be the kind of software bug most likely to kill someone. It's, yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, Chrysler's patch must be manually implemented via a USB stick. Really? Huh. Or by a dealership. Well, there you go. Our connected world. 471,000 hackable automobiles. Wow. You would think there could be some kind of, uh, you know, push button kill switch. That would solve it. Never connected my U Connect, but I still believe they can access the vehicle regardless if they wanted to before the patch. Well, according to what I read here, it's not that difficult. Yeah. Congress takes on car hacking, which means we'll have a patch by tw in 20 years from now. Uh, let's see here. This was updated yesterday, okay. Or update as of yes. Chrysler has issued a recall. <laughs> What did you say about keeping it in the garage? Chrysler has issued a recall for 1.4 million vehicles. Ah, the company has also blocked their wireless attack on Sprint's network to protect vehicles with vulnerable software. There you go. Glad you took the train. I like trains. Anyway, yeah, Subaru. Yeah, Joe, one of my friends has a, a 2000, um, I don't know, I forget. Five, six Subaru is still kicking. Oh, 2015, is that what it was? Okay, all right. Okay, got it, all right. Sorry about that. Verge. Let's take a look at that real quick. Apple wants lower taxes. Of course. 2017 Forester. Okay, nice. Facebook's rumored smart speaker. Um, I have no idea what that is. Let's take a quick look. Uh, 
let's see here. Facebook is developing a smart speaker with a 15-inch touch panel. Uh, let's see. Um, the speaker is the panel? Huh. Facebook tried to make a custom Android phone, yeah. Called HTC. Well, that was our number one problem. Um, hmm. Oh, well. Skip that. Mr. Gurs, welcome. Ah, that's right. You're, you're Russian, comrade. Welcome. Ransomware victim. This is of as of today. Ransomware victims have paid out have paid out more than twenty five million dollars. Is that all? Huh. HTC is you. Does anybody care about HTC anymore? Just a thought. Anyway. The first Nokia flagship Android phone is launching. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Yeah, I got a message. I got, I got a notification from Nokia. I would love to test their new phones. Um, Facebook more spy. I wonder if Brian Lunduk has updated his status. Did he try to delete himself off of Facebook? I don't know. Flagship Nokia brand Android phone next month. Let's see. August 16th. Toki Toki Rusnaki. Da. Dobre vece, Fat Elvis. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Dual camera system there again. Carl Zeiss. Nokia is expected to feature 5.3 inch display. Four, six gigs of RAM, 64 of storage. Okay, well that sounds like it'd be a nice phone from Nokia. They kind of faded away and came back, or trying to come back. Like they're from Finland. Uh, let's see, the launch will take place in London on 7.30 p.m. local time, August 16th. Very good. All right, let's see here. I'm going to... Um, We'll go to some um, quick, funny news, and then we're going to wrap this up. I got to take my son's, I got to drop off my son's car to the shop in the morning. He's leaking coolant. He was freaking out today. His temperature went like all the way almost to the red. Luckily, he didn't drive far, so yeah. Uh, let's see what do we got here. Faceless book. Yeah, just don't have a Facebook account, Joe, and you are the faceless book person. Okay, let's browse through some nonsense and we'll call it a night. How does that sound? Squirrel carrying bobcat becomes Dallas neighborhood. Squirrel carrying bobcat. Okay. Killer whale uses tail to flip seal out of the water. Bet that was fun. Arkansas roller coaster rider stranded. Ew, that's not fun. Bear blamed for cliff jumping deaths of 200 <laughs> sheep in France. Yeah, I, I read this. This is kind of funny, kind of not. The bear chased the sheep to off the cliff. Anyway, okay, Mark, thanks for stopping by. Catch you on the next one. Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's see. YouTube chef crafts sushi for cats. Ooh. Man accused of trying to buy cocaine at Hartford Police Station. Why? Were they having a special? Oh, man. 
Bear spends two hours thrashing inside of Colorado man's SUV. Oh man. Uh, heat causes bread dough to rise, leak out of semi while in. Tr oh, I gotta take a look at this. <laughs> I guess if it gets hot enough. Yeah, I called my dad in Italy. It was like 109 degrees. It's been crazy in there in, in Rome and in Italy. Thomas, howdy from Texas. How are you? Welcome to the live stream. Different topics tonight, Thomas. We talked about the Linux, uh, something called OB Revenge. We took a look at the Mate desktop. And right now I'm just finish this, finishing up the stream. Um, some weird news. Uh, heat causes bread dough to rise. That would be a weird sight. When you think you've seen it all, dough. <laughs> Good one. Good one. That's by Trooper Brooke Bova. <laughs> Good one, Trooper. <laughs> you've seen it all, dough. Oh, my. The yeast to rise from the heat, yeah. Huh. So when you're driving on the highway, just grab a piece of dough, bread, and... <laughs> Holy grain, Batman. <laughs> oh, well. At least no one got hurt. Selfie with the trooper? Why not? All right, what else we got here? Man uses portable shower backpack to keep cool at bus stop. Huh. Yeah, Rose, LB Revenge seems okay, at least in a virtual machine. I seem smooth enough, so yeah. Yeah, I had a good time, you know, messing with it. So. Well, let's see here. Anything else that's funny here? Yeah, this was funny. Horse enthusiastically scratches buttocks on pickup truck. I wonder if the horse was trying to send a message to the type of truck. Just a thought. Crock scary, yeah. Uh, traveler perplexed by telephone pole sticking up from... That looks like it's in the middle of the freaking road. Let's see what do we got with this. You like 18.2 Mint? Very good, Joe. Um, Brazil. This is a pole in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um... A traveler on a Brazilian road shared video of the weirdest thing. Yeah, the man on a road in Icozinho, Sierra, showing a telephone pole installed on the side, well to the side of the double ye yellow line. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Who would put a pole in the center of the road? I don't get it. Uma placa dizendo poste a 100 metros. Poste a 100 metros. He had Brazilian traffic control, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Não tem como você não se assustar. 
I don't know what he's saying, but yeah. Gives a whole new meaning to the term pole position. Your wife is Polish. Okay, I don't think this has anything to do with that, uh, Fat Elvis, but yeah. That's funny. That is so weird. Can you imagine being there, knowing nothing about it, say driving at night? And you don't believe your eyes? Tom government official. Um, didn't really say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, messing with someone's mind, really. If somebody would have told me, I would have not believed it, but there it is. And it's around the curve to boot. <laughs> oh, man. Now, even even if, say they got the blueprint, wouldn't you at some point realize this is a mistake? I'm just saying. Wow. Must be a Brazilian thing. Just curious here, real quick. That's funny. Thirteen thousand views. I'm just gonna look at the comment. What if it was really the road that? <laughs> what if it was really the road that was misplaced? <laughs> uh, thinking outside the box. Uh, accident waiting to happen. Happen? Yeah, yeah. It was my first day on the job, so give it a rest. Uh, they'll probably move out the lane rather than move the pole now. I have no idea, Joe. That's bizarre. Uh, I live near the city. They have already fixed the problem. They have taken the post from the middle of the street. Ah, uh, yeah. Most probably the road is the misplaced one. Hmm. At night in fog. Yeah, that would have been a problem. And no one questioned anything. <laughs> Nobody is asking how it got there. Did you realize a large crew would take to move that into the road? That pole had a lot of wires too. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. Yeah, the pole. So. All right, a couple more minutes, guys, and I'm done. So we might end it on the uh, the mystery of the pole in Brazil. Just when you think you've seen it all, eh, eh you haven't seen the pole in Brazil. I'm going to seal up my Snyder's pretzels of Hanover. Well, this was fun. Different topics topics for tonight, keeping it fresh, I hope. Check my phone real quick. And uh, nothing going on. Okay, all right. So, yeah, OB Revenge was fun to play with. It worked fine. So, yeah, it was cool. 
don't know what I'll be taking a look at next. So, Joe Johnson, yeah, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time. Wonder what law officials thought about the poll. I don't know, Rose. They probably thought, what the bleep? That's my guess. No more pole dancing in the street. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what was my joke? That was the pole position. <laughs> oh, man. Well, obviously those workers knew what they were doing. Uh, even if they got a blueprint that obviously would have been wrong... At some point, somebody would have made a phone call or say something and say, hey, but uh, evidently they figured, well, this our job is to follow orders. And they put the pole in the middle of the road because that's what they do in Brazil for their roads. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway. I have to take a look at this, uh, the car for Asphalt 8 Airborne. I like playing that game. I thought this was a family channel. Uh, it is, Rose. It is. It is. Uh, that's why I'm not going to say anything else, Rose. Yeah. Yeah, leave it to your imagination. But yes, this is a family channel, absolutely. But we can still have a little bit of fun, right, Rose? <laughs> Coming to America soon. Watch, watch they'll, they'll probably make a movie out of that. The Pole in the Road. One time here where I live, Years ago, um, we had a bad snowstorm and, you know, snow and ice. And Anyway, driving up the hill on the main drag here, um, they're just teasing. Now, come on, Rose. This is a family channel. Don't tease me. <laughs> I know, Rose. I know. But getting back to the road thing, driving up the road and... This is for real. A resident, <laughs> I guess the pothole in the middle of the road was really, really bad, like dangerous. So, so the worker had taken an orange cone, you know, those orange uh, cones, construction cones, you know, warning cones that they used to block off the road, those big orange cones. Someone had taken one of those cones, stuck a pole in the top of the cone with the sign. <laughs> I guess I could say this with the sign pointing down with an arrow that said as a warning, big ass pothole, not pothole, not big pothole, but big ASS pothole with the arrow <laughs> pointing down to make sure that the drivers got the message, especially at night. I'll never forget that. So, well, it saved my rear from hitting it. That's about the most unusual, funny, funniest thing I've seen uh, on the roads. Um, yeah. Probably the second funniest thing was something last year. Uh, there was a highway sign here in the States uh, to try to, you know, make it clear to don't text and drive and there was a highway sign like instead of saying you know construction or whatever the highway sign said get your head out of your apps yep that's what it said I thought that was kind of clever no Netra family is not overrated it is very very important because all things considered in the end you got family. I suppose it does depend on your family, what kind of family. Yeah, but no, family is very important. Hey, what we do here is a family, guys. Come on, right? This community of, of techies. Without you as a, a Toss Today family, why am I doing this, right? It's very important. Not highly rated. Not at all. 
So. All right, guys, I'm going to end it. I want to thank everybody who joined on the live stream. It was a lot of fun, fun to do. And um, my friend and I, we were thinking about doing a, uh, a live hangout talking about gaming. Um, I might have to contact him tomorrow see if he wants to do it. Um, talk about what's going on with the latest gaming news. Um, he did, I think the E3 was what, last month? I lost track out in California. But um, anyway, that's all I have for this one. So yeah, just, you know, just um, go to the channel if you haven't already. Just click the little bell notification so you get a notification whenever I post something. I don't always schedule, have a regular schedule. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks to everybody. Uh, thank you, Rose, for being on these streams quite a bit. Good night. And I will catch you guys on the next one. If there's a bit of news that you find unusual or funny, uh, just drop me, a, uh, drop me a comment or a note, and I'll be happy to take a look at it. Why not? That's all I have for this one. This is Toss Today signing off. Be safe. Catch you later.